Mr. Baldwin. Sponsored by Current. Today, we're going to look at three places you can't You're out of focus! Okay. Oh, and people who went there anyways. But before we get into Put the ball and cap on. As Joker. I don't want to ruin my makeup, though. If you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload one or two times every week. So if that's of interest to you, Ball the next joking. time the like button has an itch on their back, offer to scratch it for them, but then continuously misunderstand their direction. All right, let's go. On January 1st, 2015, a family in South Yorkshire, England, gathered at a restaurant for their annual New Year's Day lunch. But one member of this family who said they would be attending didn't show up. It was 50-year-old Stephen Winfrey, who was an unemployed, divorced father of two. Who this one's a real photo, chat. This one's a real photo. Dylan and Cole Sprouse came up with an idea for the last season of their show on Disney because they wanted to get a producer rights, I think. So they went to Disney, told them their idea, and Disney basically laughed at them and said no. Then Disney contacted them a few weeks later and basically proposed the exact same idea. That just sounds like every big media company ever. That's why I kind of like how the world is now. Even though society's pretty fucking bad. I think the world's a little bit better because uh, people can rely on themselves and uh, people can make them, they can make themselves. They can become famous by themselves. Like um, there's plenty of self-made artists now that are really good, that don't require uh, big companies to take over. Society's kind of getting better. The only reason it's getting better is because we're more connected. Like me? No, I'm not a celebrity yet. Watch that Ballin video where he tells a story? Okay. Recent years had become quite depressed. When they reached out to him on his phone and he didn't pick up, the family pretty quickly started to worry that something could have happened to him, that, you know, perhaps he did something to harm himself given his mental state. But his sister, Nadine, who was at this lunch, she reassured the rest of the family that she had spoken to Stephen the night before and he was in great spirits and had told her that his plan was to go rabbit hunting the next day on <coughs> New Year's Day before heading over to the restaurant for lunch. And because because Nadine knew that- All right, Amy, what emote do you want? What emote do you want me to add? Tell me. That her brother recently had really taken a liking to rabbit hunting. It was one of the very few things that actually made him happy. She told the family, look, I bet you anything he just lost track of time and he will get here late or maybe we won't see him at all, but at least he's out doing something that makes him happy. And so the family was reassured by this. And so they- I don't know. You spent 10,000 points and you don't know. You, you, you literally bought the most expensive points I have and you don't know. They sat down at their table, they ordered their food, and the whole That's meal, everyone's kind of right looking there. over at the front door, expecting Stephen to come strolling in at any minute. But when they finished up eating, he still had not arrived. And so as the family was getting ready to leave the restaurant and head back home, they all decided that, you know what, I'm sure Stephen is fine, he's doing something he loves. I'm Why are you doing this? Why are you wasting all of your points? Okay. I'm sure he did just get carried away. And so we'll just wait for him to contact us. And so the family, they all leave the restaurant and they spend the rest of the day at their respective households. And then the following morning, they all get in touch with each other and they discover that still no one has seen or heard from Steven. And so at this point, the family just felt like there was something off about this. And so they contacted the police and they reported him missing. As the police were getting ready to head out and begin looking for Steven that Stand day, 
points is about sending a message. Stephen had been found. Although the exact details of what happened to Stephen may never be fully understood, this is the best theory that the police this have come up with. Sad. On okay. New Year's Day, January 1st, the day Stephen was supposed to meet his family for lunch, he had gotten up early and headed out to a nearby forested park to do some rabbit hunting, just like he told okay. his sister he would be. He had gone to the park with his dog and some ferrets. The way Stephen caught rabbits is he would release these ferrets into various rabbit holes, and then he would stand back with his rifle, and he would wait for the ferret to run the rabbits out of their holes, out into the... That's a thing? It's known as ferreting? You just have a handful of ferrets, and you just, like, toss them in holes? Go get them, boy! What? It, what? That's a thing? The open, and then he would raise his rifle and shoot at the rabbits, and then his dog would run over and grab the rabbit and bring it back to him. And so all morning long, he was doing this with relative success, and then something happened to where Stephen decided he needed to actually look inside of one of these rabbit holes. Perhaps one of his ferrets got stuck, or one of the rabbits got stuck, but either- Don't- don't tell me he falls in and like suffocates to death or some shit or like maybe a rabbit or a snake snake you're all saying snake all right how many bets are on snake you know let's, let's do you know let's let's do it ready we're gonna do a we're gonna do a thing okay all right we're all right start a prediction Okay, so, snake, or, um, he falls in? I'll just go with that. Or here, how about this? We'll say animal attack, or, uh... Falls in slash accident. We'll do with that. I'll go with that. We'll go with that. I feel like that's more uh, ge generalized. So at least I could pick one if we if we fuck up. All right. <clears throat> Either way, he wanted to look into the opening of one of these rabbit holes, and so he walked over to it, and apparently he couldn't quite see whatever it was he wanted to see, and so he got down on his hands and knees and stuck his head into this rabbit hole opening. Now, these openings to these rabbit holes are pretty narrow. Did he? Did his head get stuck? So once he forced his head inside, it got stuck, he could not pull it out again. And so all around the outside of this hole where his head was stuck, there were these deep divots that his hands had obviously dug once he realized he was stuck because he was trying to dig the entrance a little bit wider to get his head out. But as he was working really, really hard and laboring to kind of dig this hole out, he was burning up the very limited amount of oxygen that was inside of this hole. And so very quickly, as he was trying to save himself, he would have started to struggle breathing because there just wasn't enough air in this hole. And so when it became clear he was starting to suffocate, he abandoned the approach of trying to dig himself out and began trying to contort his body outside of the hole at really extreme he angles. Break to try his to neck? pop his head out, even if it meant breaking his neck in the process. But no matter how hard he tried, he just could not get his head out. The following day, January 2nd at 4 p.m., this is after Stephen has been reported oh missing, God. a person walking through that forested park, they found Stephen. They saw his body poking out of that hole at a really extreme angle, and so they called the police. The police showed up to the park, and they confirmed that Stephen was dead. He had suffocated. His oh, death thanks, was man. not ruled a suicide. It was determined to be an accident. As for Stephen's dog and his ferrets, they were found near his body and they were unhurt. Before we get into our next story- Wow! Well, uh, at least we could pick one of them. Yeah, that was an accident. I would consider that an accident. Wow, that is- that sucks. That's just like a big sucks moment right there. That, that's a- wow. <clears throat> so yeah, he basically died for nothing. How do you, dude, how do you shove your head in, you, you must have had to really push his head in there to get it stuck like that. There's no way. Story, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Current. Now, that's me. 
That I, I have a sponsor. Don't use his code, chat. Use my code. It's going to be code Bionic Pig. Okay, use my code. Brian Joplin was born in 1972 and was raised in this tiny town in Oklahoma called Hugo. Use my he code. was a big guy, so growing up, he was always encouraged to play football, and he did. But his real passion had always been working on cars. It Adam and Eve sponsor code when? I've actually, not exaggerating, I've been sponsored by Adam and Eve before on a YouTube video. And I recommended chat to buy a uh, rainbow colored butt plug. I'm not even joking. Thing he loved to do and he was extremely good at doing. After he graduated high school, he stuck around in Hugo doing some auto body work, but he got this feeling that he should do something bigger with his life. And so in 1992, he decided to enlist in the United States Navy. This was something his family was extremely proud of him for doing, especially his grand- I don't know how he got these scars. It was a cum accident. Father who had flown bomber planes during World War II. Following Brian's Anonymous initial Navy. military training, nice better known car. as boot camp, he was sent to Avian Bomber. An anonymous user gifted a tier one sub to Snugget Powerx. If you're gonna return it for the love of God, clean it before you do. Oh yeah, I forgot about planes that. During World War II. Following Brian's initial military training, better known as boot camp, he was sent to Aviation Machinist Mate School, which is a military school for military members that teaches you how to be a mechanic for all things that fly. And so after Brian breezed through the school because he was already That's a very skilled I would like mechanic to do and so it came pilot. to him naturally, he was sent to his That'd first duty sick. station out in California. And so he joins his California California unit and immediately he excels and he becomes one of the very best mechanics at his unit oh, without despite further being interruption one of the most let's junior. celebrate and suck some dick thank you a mistake was mad i appreciate that and while he was in California, he also go. met his wife, Belinda. And so over the next several years that he was in California, and then he moved around to Texas and a couple of places. We would send out airplanes in the night sky early shooting stars. Are we starting a An anonymous train? user gifted a tier one sub to the 40-foot goose. Are we scam training right now, dude? We're close to a scam train. Thank you, anonymous. <gasps> continued to shine at work and at home he and his wife began building a family they had two daughters and so they were having sex oh by and large everything in right, brian's life was going let's celebrate and suck some dick. three gifters it's scam train it's scam train time scam train time let's go exactly to plan until Brian made a terrible mistake. Fast forward to October 4th, 2005, and Brian, who was 32 at the time, was deployed with his unit to Bahrain, is which is a country in the Persian Gulf. That particular day, Brian, along with two other mechanics from his unit and two pilots from his unit, had been tasked An with flying from Bahrain to north to, to Kuwait, Kuwait, which is another country in the Persian Gulf. Thank you, this was a routine flight about an hour long. It was one they had made several times during this deployment. <laughs> Brian was not really looking water forward to doing it, and neither stop. sex punk. Sex, sex. Thank you so Without much for further thousand interruption, bits. Let's celebrate and suck some dick. Thank you so much for ten gifters, anonymous. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find you. And what I do, I'm going to shit on your floor. I'm going to shit on your floor. That's what I'm going to do. It's getting crazy up in here. Yeah. Everyone's been eating ass, but everyone starts losing their minds when I start eating my own shit.
there were the other people that were on this particular flight. But Brian decided the way he would make this trip nice. less monotonous Shoot. and boring is, is he would perform again. the stunt. So Brian and the other two mechanics, they load in the back of this helicopter in the cargo area, so the passenger area of the Hilo, and the two pilots, they load into the cockpit. And within a couple of minutes, they were Without 125 feet off the ground. And oh my God! Schmick, Schmickens, thank you so much for five gifters. <laughs> We're drinking water while these peasants starve. Come, 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 come. <laughs> We're drinking water while thank these you, peasants Kimi Cat, starve. Thank you, Kimmy Cat, for two hundos. I appreciate that. Come. Dude, we're almost, we're almost maxed out hype train right now. Let's go. That's a dub. That's a dub. No, we're not taking any L's. All right, let's figure out. Okay, let's figure out what happens to the guy. He's flying a plane, a helicopter, and uh, he said he wanted to do a trick or something. Please let us watch the video. Thank you, subbers. No, don't watch the. No, we're actually, I'm gonna wait. More subs now careening forward out over the Persian Gulf at over 120 miles an hour. Brian and the other two mechanics in the back of this craft had elected to keep the back loading ramp that folds up and down to allow people to come in and out of this helicopter. They had decided to keep it down for this flight. So basically, uh, without further they have this interruption, huge let's celebrate and suck some dick. Five gifted schmeckens. <laughs> We're drinking water while these ridiculous stop. Shut up, pig. No. 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 <laughs> Thank you for 100 bitties, Danny. We're drinking water Decebo. while these peasants stop. All right. I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> We're drinking water while these peasants starve. Come, 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 come. Use code Bionic Pig for current. True. Without further interruption, True. let's celebrate and suck some was dick. Made. Five gifters. Holy shit. And anonymous. Gifted 10. Just wait. It'll be there. Without further interruption, let's celebrate and suck some dick. Jeez. We're almost a seven hundo. Is your family missing? Think about Think it. Think about it. Danny DeSivo gifted a tier one sub to Daddy Lord. Yeah, chat, just get okay, everyone get all your subs out of your system right now. Michigan. Just get all just get them all out of your system now. An anonymous user gift. Throw me all, give them, give them all, all to me one. now. Just get it out of your system. Just keep going. We're almost maxing out level five. Thank you, anonymous. Thank you, Danny DeCivo. <clears throat> I'm having pizza on Halloween. Want me to save you a slice? Yes. 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 All right. We good? So uh, actually in the future chat, I think I'm going to do a thing just to make it more streamlined for uh, my YouTube content is I might when I start a video, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't. No, 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 I'll figure, I'll figure something out in the future. Can you give subs to people that are already sub? No, I don't believe so. Unless it's a higher tier sub. You can do a higher tier sub, but you can't do like the same thing. You kind of look like Joker from the movie Joker. I'm Joker from the movie The Dark Knight. <laughs> Opening that just looks straight <laughs> down to the... <laughs> Danny DeCivo, thank all you these for 100 bits. Stop. All right. All right. Here we go. Down for this flight. So basically, they had this huge open... Michigan! <laughs> Schmeckins gifted a tier one sub to Angelina Kia. Thank you. Is your family missing? Think about it. Maggie Thank you, Maggie. 411 Hi. gifted a tier one sub to My Chemical Mermaid. Thank you, They guys. have given 19 gift subs in the channel. Dude, that hype train's almost maxed. 
Holy shit. You said get out of here. Yes. If anyone is giving any more subs, do it now. Or at least until this video is over. Don't get me wrong. I love every single sub you're giving me. Just stop spreading them out. I, I just throw them all at once. If you got any more, get it out of your system. I swear to God, if I start, <laughs> if I start and like the first, there we go. Number twelve. Thank Monkey you, my chemical mermaid, for the gift. I appreciate days. that. My chemical mermaid gifted a tier Thank one you, sub Reaper's to Pass, for the underscore. gift. I appreciate Can that. Let's go. Explode. Reapers past gifted a tier one sub to poke blue and Mew two. See, this I told you, pick it's gonna be annoying. Sub in the channel. Chat, that's what I was talking about. I think I'm gonna figure out a method, uh, where it's not as uh, at least w I wonder if I can figure it out like when I'm uh doing videos, when I'm watching videos, I could just mute them. I could see them, but I could just mute them. I think I might do that. I wonder if I could do that. I probably could figure that out. Oh, it's Jimmy! It's it's Jimmy! Everyone say hi. Society. He missed my poo-poo joke. Alright, we all good? But yeah, in the future, I think... Because that, that does happen. Like, when we get... Like, if we get a hype train during a video... It, it, it can be distracting sometimes. But don't get me wrong. I appreciate it. Schmeckins, thank you so much for the gift. Schmeckins gifted a tier one sub to CNNBL underscore. Two people gifted... Wait, no, okay. Anonymous gifted one to... You're not sub to An anonymous me? Anonymous user gifted a tier one sub to Elvis the Alien. He wasn't sub to me? Oh. We, we really do live in a society, Chad. A tier one sub we really do live in a society. They Thank you, Maggie Pye. They gift subs in the channel. We did it, chat. We maxed it out. 54 subs, 1,700 bits. Let's freaking go. All right. Now, I want all of you to hold, hold your subs, all right? We're going to hold. If you got any more subs, hold them until the end of the video, all right? All right, we're gonna we're gonna scoot back a little bit. Hold the line, chat. Hold. Couple of minutes, they were 125 feet off the ground, careening forward out over the Persian Gulf at over 120 miles an hour. Brian and the other two mechanics in the back of this craft had elected to keep the back loading ramp that folds up and down to allow people to come in and out of this helicopter. They had decided to keep it down. That's for this a good flight. idea. So basically, they had this huge opening that just looked straight down to the earth. That's but this is a very common thing idea. in the military. Lots of helicopters when they're flying around have either a side door open or the back ramp down because it provides an incredible view and more importantly it provides this amazing breeze inside of the cabin a few minutes later Anonymous when the is helicopter rich. is way out over the persian gulf brian decides now is a good time to do this stunt and so he looks across at the other side oh, of the no. helicopter and kind of signals at the other two mechanics it's super loud inside of the back of a helo <clears> and so <throat> there's no way they could have spoken to each other oh, besides no. of the headset They're gonna and they fall. were not about to speak about the stunt over the headset because they didn't want the pilots to know and so brian signaled to the other two because they were totally in on his guys stunt he was watch about this to do. they all found so they fall grinned out of the and helicopter. one of them pulled out a camera to be ready for what he was going to do and then brian disconnected his helo lanyard so inside of a military helicopter you'll find all these metal eyelets these little rings all over the floor the walls the ceiling oh, and these are there yeah. in order to attach cargo or strap things down or to attach yourself a person inside oh, of the helicopter. what an idiot and so the way you do that is by using your helo lanyard it's this belt you wear that has this what special strap idiot. that comes off the Hold front my of it beer, and at Todd, the end I'm of jumping. this one or two foot long strap is a carabiner a clip and you clip that onto oh, any no. of 
of those eyelets. And so that keeps you from flying out of the helicopter. If the pilots need to maneuver suddenly, or if you lose altitude, anything can happen inside. And so Brian removes his helo lanyard and then grabs the stretch of nylon what rope. It was like a crudely built safety harness that kind of functioned like a helo lanyard in the sense that there was a carabiner on one end and on the other, there was a way to attach it to yourself. But unlike it being this belt and kind of high tech system that attached to him, it was really just kind of a slip knot on one end of this 10 foot long line. And so Brian most likely had built this 10 foot long safety harness for this particular stunt uh, or someone else had. But either way, he, he picks this up after detaching his helo lanyard and he puts the loop end of this 10 foot line, the slip knot end over his head down to his waist and then cinched it tight. And then he very carefully stood up and walked towards the back of the helo. And then he clipped the end of this 10 foot line with the carabiner into one of the eyelets on the ground, right He's where gonna... the back ramp begins to go down. And so once that oh was in place, God. he turned and looked at the other two mechanics and gave them one more thumbs up. And then he got down on his hands and knees and he begins crawling backwards down the ramp. And so once he gets to the very edge of this ramp, so literally right behind him is just the open air. At that point, he grabs with his left hand one of those metal rings that are on the actual ramp itself. He gets a firm grip with Why? one hand and then with his right hand, he grabs the side of the ramp or some metal framing there. And so once he had a good grip and he felt confident in it, he kind of slowly lowered his lower half until it slipped off of the ramp. And as soon as it did, the winds outside the helicopter, the 120 mile an hour plus winds, they immediately swept his legs up and kind of held them in the air horizontal like he was flying. And so he's holding on to the back of the Why? ramp, but his arms are kind of tucked up America, near his chest. Fuck, but yeah, once he feels much. his legs up in the air, he slowly extends himself. And finally, when they were fully extended, he was officially doing the Superman stunt. This was called Supermanning, what he was doing. And as soon as he was in this position, the other crew members inside of the helicopter, they knew this was it. Let's take some pictures. And so one of them got their camera out and took some pictures of him. There's going to be and a Brian picture knows of him, like, he's getting flying pictures away. Taken. He's holding on as tight as he can. And then after the pictures were taken and Brian looked up and kind of got the thumbs up that he was didn't say anything about donos you son of a bitch you piece of shit <coughs> i'm so mad at you i'm so mad at you chat is this is this doing it for the vine is it is this like one of those doing this do it for the vine or do it for the gram? I hate money. Stop it. Yes. When it when it's anonymous, yes, because I cannot properly thank the person. It was good. He began trying to pull himself back into the helicopter, but he lost his grip. As soon as he lost his grip, those 100 The timing of that fart. <laughs> he lost his grip. 120 mile an hour plus winds, they whipped him backwards and the safety harness that he had strapped around his waist, that's the only thing that caught him from flying away from the helicopter. And so Brian attempts oh, to God. try to grab the ramp, but it's too far away. And as he's getting pulled by the wind away from the helicopter, that harness that was around his waist, it's getting it rides tighter. up until it stops right around his chest. And so at that point, he keeps his arms pinned by his side because he doesn't want the harness to slip up over over his shoulders because then he will fall to his death but oh, because God. this harness was self-tightening as he was whipping in the winds the wind was pulling him so hard away from the helicopter that it was tightening that loop around his chest oh. and so his chest got so tightly squeezed that it caused him to pass out and as soon as that happened his arms that were holding that harness in place well his arms went limp and then the wind whipped his arms over his head and the harness immediately slipped up over his shoulders off his there head he off his arms and he went flying 125 feet goes. all the way down to the water below where he died there were at least eight people that were punished for this incident including the two crew members in the back of the helicopter taking what pictures because idiot. they were totally in on that yo yo hold my beer let me show you guys this trick real quick but the details of the punishments were never dude this looks like a dude this literally looks like a guy who would say hold my beer 
Like this is this is the epitome of hold my beer. Bill Murray. <laughs> it's just a tubbier Bill Murray. Wow. In public. Back in my day when I did it for the vine, I died. God. Oh. A harmless stream. In the late 1860s, a group of rugged American explorers... 1860s? Come on. You can't stream in the 1860s. That title makes no sense. What? That's stupid. ...came out of the wilderness and went straight to a newspaper to tell them about this otherworldly place they had found. And so the newspaper sat down, they got their notepad out, and these explorers start describing okay. this place, and they say, okay... Look at you. Come here. Show everybody. Look at the camera. Scoot this way. Nope. Other way. Here. Just come here. Look. He's spooky. You look cool. <laughs> yeah. It was blurry when you showed it. All right. Come back here, Ezra. Come here real quick. Ready? There, that's in focus. <clears throat> Looks spooky. What do you look like? A zombie. You look like a zombie? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can go scare people? Kind of reminded me of Jack Skellington. It's probably the white. The, the, yeah, the face, the face makeup Amy got is really good. Okay, well, it's this huge expanse of wilderness. And in the middle of it, there are all these boiling lakes that are either neon green or yellow or red or all of those. And they're shooting boiling water into the sky. And there are these breathtaking waterfalls and snow-capped mountains. And there are bison and elk and wolves and bears just free roaming the whole area. And so the newspaper, they Yosemite? take all this down. And at the end of it, they say, okay, guys, well, unfortunately, we don't publish fiction. But these explorers weren't lying. They were describing an area that we now know as Yellowstone National Park, yeah. okay. which is this massive expanse of wilderness in Wyoming that sits on top of a volcano. And those boiling neon green, red, and yellow lakes really do exist. Those are hot springs, and they are the result of water passing by and I'm making contact with like underground magma chambers. Today, Yellowstone is so popular that every year millions of people go to the park, and so as a result, the park employs hundreds of people year around well, to keep up with tourism. Many Probably. of these employees are young people, like college students, and in addition to being paid for their work, the park also offers them the ability to live in employee housing, which are Ooh. basically dormitories spaced all across the park to make it easier to just be on site and do their job. That's pretty cool. And these dormitories are either Isn't free Yellowstone, or very Yellowstone low cost. about to explode? Dude, Yellowstone, Yellowstone's been about to explode for like hundreds of years. It could explode tomorrow, but it also could explode like thousands of years from now. So at least we'll all die. You know, that's the plus side of it. At least at least like all of America is going to die. And so these young people typically take up that offer and will stay inside of these dormitories. My vo voice is low a little pit. Then just turn up your uh, ears. Or I'll just turn this down for as long as they're working at the park. And so in 2000, a 20-year-old summer employee named Sarah Hulfers, she was staying in one of these dormitories in the park, oh, and no. she was in her room when a group of other young employees that were staying in this dorm came down the hall, and they knocked on her door, and they asked her if she wanted to come with them to go swimming. And so Sarah, she had a day off, and she wasn't doing anything, and swimming. so she said, sure, I'll come with you guys. And so after they all got their bathing suits on and got their towels and snacks packed, they left the dormitories and got into a couple of cars and then they drove over to this dirt lot that was right up against this huge forest and so they parked they got out and they make their way over to this trailhead that begins in the way more parking lot because people and goes have been straight tossing into coins this into the forest and so they walk down idiots, this trail dude. until the trail goes right dude, out of tourists are literally like the most deplorable awful humans to exist like tourists are so stupid i hate them I said this last time, but like they literally just think that they own everything and they're like they're the protagonist. It's so fucking stupid. Like everywhere they go, it's like their first time there and they act like they own the entire thing. It's fucking annoying.
out of the forest and brings them to the edge of this river. And this river was called the Firehole River. It was called that because the surface of this river steamed and it gave the impression that this river was on fire. The reason this happened is some of the water flowing through this river would pass by those underground magma chambers, warming it up. And so this is a lot like the hot springs, except on a much smaller level. The hot All springs the litter, I'm sure are gets left boiling, behind, true. whereas this river was just slightly warmer to the point <clears throat> where it would steam. So totally safe to swim in. So Sarah and the rest of this group, they come out of that trailhead and they're standing on the edge of this beautiful river and they walk down to the edge and they all jump in and they have this great day. They're swimming around, they're playing games and they were only expecting to be there for a couple of hours, but they were having so much fun that before long, the sun had gone down and they were still in the river. And so when it was dark out, they finally climbed out of the river and they toweled off. And then they realized they had a bit of a problem because they did not expect to be there for as long as they were no one had brought flashlights and the way back to the parking lot would be going along that trail through the forest oh, that was a no. pretty far trail and it's totally pitch black out there's no ambient light oh, and realistically no. there's some pretty big animals that live inside oh. of that forest and so some people in this group were a little bit nervous about walking through this forest but ultimately about half of the group said you know what whatever let's just run through the forest and get back to our cars as fast as we can i'm sure nothing will happen to us and the other half decided they would look for an alternative route that would skirt the forest and allow the moonlight to be their guide along the way That's but why like if you know your way back just follow your way back like why make a different route in the dark that Stupid. second group was made up of Sarah, <clears throat> along with two 18-year-old boys named Lance Bucci and Tyler Montague. So Sarah and these two boys, they're standing there and they're watching the first That's group stupid. go into the forest and disappear. And yeah. then oh, she, along God, with these two guys, they turn God. right and they begin skirting the river and walking around the forest. And so they walk downstream with the river on one side and the forest on their left. And they're walking for a while until they see up ahead on their left, it looks like the forest is starting to thin out maybe a little bit. And so they took that as an opportunity to cut left and basically begin kind of going straight towards the parking lot, which was generally off come to their left. Falling into hot springs, so they make guys that turn, they start walking, the and the terrain is relatively with open. The it's this big open field with a couple of... Dude, that's what I'm saying. Tourists are fucking dumb. Like, okay, these people aren't tourists, but like, they're stupid. You know, like most people in, in his stories are just stupid. Like, what a dumb... I, I don't know. I don't know, maybe, maybe that was completely accidental, but this just sounds like stupidity. Trees here and there. It was pretty easy to navigate, and they felt like, hey, we found a great alternative route. The moonlight's still shining through. We've got great visibility, and so they're walking along, happy as can be, and then they see there's a couple of streams up ahead. They get to the first stream, and it's not that big, so they jump across it. They get to the next stream. It's still not that big. They jump across that one, and then they get to this third stream, and they realize, you know, it's still pretty small, but it's significantly bigger than the last two. Uh -oh. And so if we mistime it, we could fall into it. Now, this was not some huge deal. They were already uh -oh. wet from having gone swimming, but they didn't want to jump in this stream. And so they considered walking off to the right and trying to find an area that was more narrow. Uh -oh. They could jump across more they, easily, they, but they figured they tried to jump over it. They, um, they tried, they tried to jump. They tried to jump over it, chat. They were probably within maybe one or 200 feet of the parking lot. They couldn't see it, but they knew they were close. And they really didn't want to go farther and farther away to only have to just jump over this thing anyways. And so they decide, you know what? Let's just jump across it. Let's just do it. If we fall in, we fall in. And so the three of them backed up from the stream to give themselves some running room. And then they grabbed hands. And at the same time, all three of them- Grab hands? That's going to make it harder ran forward and leapt across the stream and they cleared it they landed on the other side but the ground they landed on was kind of loose and soft and so it kind of crumbled underneath them and they all fell backwards into the stream in the darkness this stream had looked like the other two streams they had seen albeit a little bit larger and so they were not thinking this could be potentially hazardous oh, if they fell into the water but it would turn out this stream was extremely hazardous it was nothing like the other two streams they 
they had encountered. This one was runoff from a nearby hot spring. And so the temperature inside of this stream was 178 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was practically boiling water oh. and it looked like it was shallow. But in fact, this stream was 10 feet deep. And oh. so when this trio fell into these scalding waters, they oh. let out blood curdling streams. And the other group that had ran down the forest path, they had got to the parking lot and were waiting for them. And so they hear this scream and they just take off running in the direction of the screams. They cut right through the forest oh. and they come out to that field and they find Lance and Tyler are on the edge of the stream, desperately trying to pull Sarah out of the water. And so the parking lot crew, they run over and they grab Sarah, they pull her out. They don't really know what's happened. They don't know this is some boiling. Oh, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. That's, that's pain. That's, pain. that's, oh, I can't even imagine. Oh, fuck. Killing stream, but it very quickly dawns on them when Lance and Tyler and Sarah just continue to scream outside of the water that something is horribly wrong. And so one of the people in the parking lot crew, they take off running, they go into one of their cars and they drive and they get help. And not that long after, a helicopter would arrive and it would take Sarah, Lance and Tyler to a nearby hospital. It would turn out Lance and Tyler, when they fell into this water, they only submerged up to their necks. And as soon as they hit the water, they immediately turned and got themselves out again. So they were only in the water for maybe a second or two. And these things ultimately saved their lives. Although they did still have burns over almost their entire bodies. They had to go through dozens and dozens of surgeries and years Ugh. of rehab and they had to pay all this money for medical bills. So it was not a smooth yep. course after they got pulled Okay, out. what happened to Sarah? That's, I don't, I mean, she's got to be lived. dead, right? As for Sarah, she was not as lucky. When she fell into the water, she completely submerged. Her head, her body, all of it went under the water. And then she just could not get herself out again. And so she stayed in the water much longer than the guys did. When she was admitted to the hospital, despite the fact she was talking and conscious, the doctors very quickly realized they had a big problem with her. A third degree burn or a full thickness burn is when the outer layer of skin gets destroyed destroyed and also the inner deeper tissues oh, of the skin man. also gets destroyed including these cells that she are was responsible actually for cooked. reproducing skin and so if you get a third degree burn that part of your body will not heal on its own you literally have to get a skin graft and a skin graft is effectively a skin but transplant. it's all over her body she had a, of skin did she body. she must have had a third degree burn literally all over her body that are unburned and they will place them over that site where you have the third degree burn. But when Sarah was wheeled into the operating room, it was determined that she had third degree burns on 100% of her body. So there was no unburned skin to use for like, skin Like imagine graft. like her eyes, like did her eyeballs like boil? Like did her, oh, like just, oh, oh. Her whole body was ruined. And so despite their best efforts, Sarah would pass away 15 hours after arriving at the hospital. A year later, Lance's family would sue the National Park Service for not having put up a sign near that particular stream to warn people of its dangers. But that lawsuit was tossed out because it was determined that the trio, Sarah, Tyler, and Lance, had chosen to walk off trail in a true true i mean it was technically their no fault. thermal area and so they were being negligent not the park uh, so that's gonna do it guys if you found the secret in today's episode let us know in the, yeah, the secret was was trauma the, tr the trauma was the secret that oh now it's time to walk away i hope you enjoyed your stay did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribe? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.